Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Okay, let me tell you um, the basically humiliating story of when I uh, behaved pathetically and I once was loved a man uh, who didn't feel the same way about me. So let me take you back. We're, we're going back into over a decade here. We're in our early 20s and we didn't know each other for around three years. He lived in London, I lived in Birmingham and, you know, every few months I would receive that heart-stopping text. It would be great to catch up in person. When are you next back in London? Um, well, viewer, um, I never had a reason to go to London. I have no ties there and quite frankly, I absolutely hate London. I hate the city, I hate everything about it. I didn't want to go there. However, when I received one of those texts from him, I would devise a convenient reason as to why I needed to be in London the very next week. And so the two of us would, you know, meet up for a coffee. So I would take the ridiculously expensive train ride down to London, uh, which I couldn't afford when I was only earning £6.50 an hour as a bookseller, and then travel the two hours there to proceed to have a coffee with a guy who then would just use me as a sounding board for his failing love life and then take the two hour journey back. And you know, every time I came down there, there was always a new woman on his mind. And I, being the fool that I was, would completely lap it up, you know, comfort him, you know, praying that one day he would see me as the emotionally consistent woman in his life and the one who would spend over a hundred pounds at the drop of the hat just to travel for a couple of hours to have a coffee with him um, every few weeks. Um, and this went on for three years until one day he sent me quite an unusual text. Hey, I was thinking, I really want to get into reading some more. You're the most well-read girl that I know, so could you give me some book recommendations? As you can see from my behind, I, as you can probably guess from my awful setup, my heart sang, I freaking love books. And I thought to myself, yes, finally, after years, he was finally trying to connect with me. You know, he wanted to see into my world and he came to me, of all people, to ask for book recommendations. So I did more than give him a few recommendations. You know, I compiled a list of books that I thought he'd love based on his favourite movies and then I bought three of them and then posted them down to London for him. And he thanked me immensely. And then two weeks later he told me the fantastic news that he'd gotten into a relationship with a girl who reviewed books online. So my list did the trick. So after several hundred pounds down the drain, three years and realizing that I would never be his type, I finally accepted my position in his life. Unrequited love is painfully common, even in modern dating. Though when most of us think of unrequited love, we think of crushes, um, it most commonly occurs actually in relationships. I've been in many situationships that have lasted weeks or months where I had feelings for someone who clearly didn't feel the same way about me. And to be honest, those are way more painful than complete unrequited love of a secret crush because situationships or relationships give you a false sense of hope that you have a chance. You know, with my London boy crush, at least he technically never led me on. You know, my imagination did all the work for me, but in an unofficial relationship, it's far more painful. You know, they want you in their life, but they're, they're unsure as to why. You know, they like you, but not enough. Perhaps because they still have feelings for an ex or because they're still waiting for that someone slightly better than you, um, someone more like their dream person to come along. Uh, so they don't want to get too attached to you, but it makes the getaway smoother for them should that mysterious person come back into their lives. And nothing feels more gut-wrenching and humiliating than spending weeks, months or years with someone who doesn't love you back. You always know in the back of your head that they don't, but whilst they're in your life, you can try and play the naive ignorance. You know, after all, they wouldn't be here if they didn't want us, right? Um, well, sadly, that's not, that's not true. Now, I'm not here to demonize people who don't love people back. You know, feelings are complicated, and sometimes people are more scared of being the bad guy by telling you that they don't feel the same way about you than spending time with someone who they have zero romantic interest for. Unrequited love hurts so much because it's impossible to not take it personally. When someone doesn't love you back or like you as much as you like them, you can't help but feel pretty worthless. You know, they are rejecting you, not the idea of love, and that translates in your head as, I'm not good enough. You tell yourself that if you were more attractive enough, if you were smart enough, talented enough, kind enough, skinny enough, tall enough, rich enough, sexy enough, then 
they wouldn't be able to resist you and they wouldn't have been able to let you go and would have fought tooth and nail to keep you in their life. Um, but they didn't because you're so insignificant that the loss of you means nothing to them. Unrequited love hurts because of the shame you feel about yourself for not being enough for the person that you cared for the most. They were enough for you and you fell short in their eyes. And that's humiliating and a shameful realization. It's enough to make you want to give up on everything, um, but honestly, it's not necessary. As easy as it is to hate yourself and pine over your lost chance for love and the person you thought was the one, pining over someone who doesn't like you back won't bring them into your life and it won't attract any love into your life. So how do you get over unrequited love? Remember, if they don't see your value, they weren't right for you. I know it sounds easy, but whenever we are victims of unrequited love, it's easier to self-flagellate over how we weren't good enough, how we fell short, etc. But in doing so, we completely overlook the most obvious thing is if they didn't actually like us that way, that means they weren't right for us because the right person will actually like us back. Being a good partner means accepting the other person unconditionally and loving them accordingly. And this person, the person that's unrequited, um, failed at the first hurdle to be meet the basic criteria of being good enough for you because they failed to meet your basic needs of being loved, accepted, seen, heard, and valued. Those are the foundations of what qualifies someone even to be considered your partner. And they couldn't even give you that. It doesn't matter how attractive, funny, talented, or skilled they were, they failed to demonstrate that they would be a good partner to you. And they weren't even honest about it. They couldn't offer you love, acceptance, loyalty, curiosity, kindness, devotion, patience. So why do you still want them because they didn't give you any of the things necessary for a relationship? They failed to meet the basic needs in a partnership, so stop pining over someone who failed to meet your standards and beating yourself up for not being good enough for them. You may not see it as a mutual uncoupling, but if they didn't meet your standards, they're not the right person for you. Two, the right love is hard to lose or mess up. Now you may have told yourself, this person is perfect for you. They made you laugh, you had heaps in common, they were hot and they were kind and they were thoughtful and you have the most amazing sexual chemistry, but now they're gone. And you're scared you'll never find that again. Whilst that may have been your experience with them, that wasn't their experience of you. And that means they're, again, not the right person for you. Real love is really hard to mess up. The right person will want to work through the doubts. The right person will want to have the patience to let a relationship unfold naturally. The right person will accept your flaws and the right person won't walk away because they will feel so amazing around you that they can't imagine their life without you and vice versa. The right love will be mutual and if it's not mutual, it's not right. Pining after the wrong person, the unrequited lover is like crying over a pair of shoes that won't fit your feet. Your feet aren't going to change no matter how much you like the shoes and the shoes won't change no matter how much you admire them, think about them and daydream about them. The next thing to remind yourself is to actually work on yourself because it's you who's hurting you the most. If it, this hasn't already become painfully clear by now, the hurt of unrequited love comes primarily from your low self-esteem and not the object of your desire. You only feel devastated about it because you don't believe you were good enough, that you failed to meet their standards, that you are unlovable, that you don't deserve someone that attractive or funny or charismatic or charming, etc. You have a scarcity mindset, believing people like that don't come along every day, as well as a belief that you are fundamentally unlovable and that one person has proven that to you and your darkest fears are correct. Well, here's your reminder that your object of your unrequited love does not control the standards of the universe. They can only decipher who they have feelings for, and that's it. They didn't love you, that's all it is. It's no deeper than that. They're not a judge of the quality of humanity, nor does their subjective opinion determine your worth and value in this world. I know this is easier said than done, but the only way to get over unrequited love is to first decouple your self-worth from this person. You've put them on such a high pedestal that you believe that they're some a mighty judge of your caliber, lovability, worth, and value. Putting it bluntly, uh, that's pretty deranged. 
they're, they're just some person. They're some random person that has the same amount of chromosomes as you do. They're not more divine or magnificent than you are. So why do you let them have such control over how you view yourself in the mirror every morning? Or how nicely you talk to yourself or treat yourself? Their rejection of you or not even acknowledgement of your existence, their unwillingness or inability to love you or like you back does not mean that you aren't worthy of love. So stop seeing it as any deeper than that. It's just some person who didn't like you. That's it. Move on and find someone who does. Because there will be. There always is. <laughs> I hope you found that helpful. This was another request sent in my Google Docs form. If you have any other requests, please look in the description box down below. You will find the Google, the Google, the Google box form there. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you soon for another video. And remember, books save lives. So keep reading.